Okay, let's step through how we would do the calculations of the joint moments for lab uh, four. I'm going to demonstrate this for the counter movement jump, but it's the same uh, process that you would use with the data for the squat jump to do those calculations. Um, so in the um, data sheet here, I've got a, a different sheet for those two conditions. Here's the squat jump, and here's the counter movement jump. And then in these other tabs down here, I've got the data for the positions of the markers for the squat jump, the forces for the squat jump, the positions of the markers for the counter movement jump, and the forces for the counter movement jump. Okay, so those are the data that they'll actually use to do the calculations, and then they will do the calculations in uh, these first two tabs here. So first thing that you want to do is copy over the column of uh, time, and that's going to make it a lot easier to um, kind of automate the rest of the calculations after we do this first row of calculations here. So let's go over to the uh, position tab for the counter movement jump. And it starts here at time zero and ends down here at 3.845 seconds. So I'm just going to copy all that over here. Okay. And then I'm going to reference in this first row here the x and y coordinates for my shoulder. So I'm going to do equals and then go to my counter movement jump positions and then find the x coordinate of the left shoulder. And you can do left or right here. It doesn't particularly matter which one you pick. You might get slightly different results because the markers aren't placed exactly in the same spot on the left and right and people don't move you know, you know, symmetrically necessarily, but you can, you can pick left or right. You don't have to do both uh, left or right. So I'll just pick left here and I'm going to click on the um, X coordinate for the shoulder there for time step zero. And notice here it's got the, uh, the data have the coordinates in millimeters and back on my sheet it wanted them in meters. So I'm going to divide by a thousand and then back on my sheet that gets me the X coordinate of the shoulder in meters. I'll do same thing for the Y coordinate. Navigate over to my tab, click on the Y coordinate of the shoulder, divide by a thousand. And there that is. And then I'm going to do that same thing for the uh, XY for the hip and for the knee and for the ankle too. That's wrong there. Okay, so there's my XY coordinates for my four uh, points of interest on the body, the shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the ankle. And this is a good chance to do a, a reality check on our data. So this is the counter movement jump. So they start uh, standing uh, more or less straight up and down. So the X coordinates for these four points, the shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the ankle should all be about the same. And so the ankle's at about uh, 18 centimeters from wherever the origin was. Hips or knees a little bit in front of that. Hips a little bit in front of that. And shoulders right about over the hip. And so that all, that all seems pretty plausible. You know, if I'm standing straight up and down, there probably shouldn't be more than maybe, you know, 10, roughly 10 centimeters between those, those different points, which is a pretty small distance. Seems, seems pretty plausible. Um, then also, my shoulder should be above my hip. So 1.4 meters into the air for the shoulder about one meter for the hip, that should be above the knee, yep, about 0.49 meters, and that should be above the ankle, about, about 10 centimeters there. So that, that all looks pretty plausible. Okay, now we will copy over the X and Y uh, ground reaction force for the kind of movement jump. So there's X, and there's Y, and then the X coordinate for the center of pressure, which again, I'll divide by a thousand because it's given in millimeters and I want it in meters. And then the Y coordinate for the center of pressure, that one is always zero, since it's always on the ground. Okay, nice thing here is that I don't have to copy over or um, enter in those formulas again for all of these other time steps here. Um, all I have to do is select this first 
row of data that I copied over there and then double click on that little green square in the lower right and then it will automatically fill them all in there. So it automatically copied everything over there from the appropriate place on those other sheets. So that's pretty nice. Saved us a lot of work. Okay, I made a, a small mistake here on the Y chord of the center of pressure. That's Excel trying to guess what we want it to do and not, not guessing very well. It looks like it's guessing, oh, you want to increment this up by a value of one each time. And I, I want that to be zero each time. So I'm just going to go to where it guessed one and say, no, that should be zero. And then again, double click to get that all the way down there. And there we look good. Okay, these uh, next three uh, sets of, of two columns there labeled R, C, O, P, hip, R, C, O, P, knee, R, C, O, P, ankle. Um, those are the distances um, from the anatomical landmark in question, either the hip, the knee, and the ankle, um, to the center of pressure. Um, what those distances will end up being are the moment arms, respectively, to the uh, uh, from the center of the joint um, to the vertical and horizontal ground reaction forces. Okay, so we'll end up multiplying these forces here by these moment arms here to get these torques here, these, those torques at the joints uh, from the ground reaction force. Okay, but before we do that, we need to calculate the moment arms uh, so that we can multiply the forces by those moment arms to get those torques um, at those joints. So what is this moment arm um, between the center pressure and the hip in the x direction? It's just the difference between those x coordinates. So I say equals x for the hip minus x for the center of pressure. And then same thing in the y direction equals y for the hip minus y for the center of pressure. And then same deal over here for the knee, the difference between x for the knee, minus x for the center of pressure, and then y for the knee, minus y for the center of pressure, and lastly x for the ankle, minus x for the center of pressure, y for the ankle, minus y for the center of pressure. Okay. Now you might wonder why did I do you know, the here hip minus center of pressure. Why didn't I do center of pressure minus hip? Um, all that's going to do is change the sign on all these. So they're all positive right now. It would, uh, it would make them all uh, negative if I changed the sign on all of them. Um, essentially, what that's going to do is change the signs on our joint torques over here. So it won't change the magnitudes of them. It will simply change the, the direction. It's like multiplying everything by a uh, negative sign. And remember, all that's really doing is selecting uh, the direction of the rotation that we're calling positive. So like anatomical flexion of that joint or anatomical extension of that joint, um, what, what direction is that? Is it, a, is it positive or, or is it negative? So that's, that's the choice that that uh, order of that calculation of the uh, moment arm is, is making. So it's not really something that affects the outcome all that much. It's just a, a decision between how do I tie the mechanics in here into the um, anatomy specifically. Okay, so to calculate the hip joint torque, I take the horizontal ground reaction force, so the force in the x direction, and I multiply it by the moment arm that's perpendicular to that direction. So I take the x ground reaction force and multiply it by the uh, moment arm in the y direction. And then I add to that the y ground reaction force multiplied by the moment arm for that joint in the x direction. Okay, and there's that joint torque. And then same thing here for these other two joints. I take the horizontal ground reaction force multiplied by the vertical moment arm plus the vertical ground reaction force times the horizontal moment arm. And then lastly for the ankle, take the horizontal ground reaction force times the vertical moment arm plus the vertical ground reaction force times the horizontal moment arm. Okay. And then again, the nice thing is I don't have to repeat all those calculations manually. I can select my first row there and then double click 
and then it populates them all down here like that. And then I can plot these and then see what I get. And it's only plotting two of them. That doesn't look quite like I want it to, so let's try plotting them one at a time. Okay. So there's my, my hip torque. Peaked at about uh, 200 Newton meters. That's pretty reasonable size hip torque. Knee torque peaked at about 400 Newton meters, a little bit bigger, but, but still pretty reasonable. And then ankle torque was a little bit smaller, but peaked at around uh, 200 uh, Newton, or sorry, but around uh, 100 Newton meters there. Okay. Then let's look at the timing of these peaks here. So my hip torque, that occurred at the 310th time step. My knee torque occurred at the 296th time step. Ankle torque that occurred at the also at that 310th time step. So a little bit, little bit of difference there in the uh, the timing of, of where those peaks occurred. So those are the calculations that they will uh, perform to uh, determine the uh, the joint moments there. Okay, the um, torques at the hip and at the knee and at the ankle.